Hey guys, welcome back to Armored Warfare. It's Jaeger 262 and happy Saturday. So, I'm still having trouble working out what happened with my first Zongfang video. I can see it on YouTube, but in the actual studio and on my channel, it doesn't show that it uploaded. So I don't know if it's out. I don't know if people are watching it. I might re-upload it later. But if it is, and if anybody saw it, you know that I'm just doing a little tech tree showcase of Zongfang. Uh, on request and so today I thought I'd take a look at artillery and maybe some more PvP gameplay of the higher tier stuff and uh, that's why I have the Palmaria out right now it's my biggest SPG it's the tier 7 Italian one and as you saw earlier you know in the other video and if you didn't I can walk through the artillery check tree a little bit later it is one of two tier 7s and it is broken actually let me just do it right now so, if you missed the first video, or if it didn't upload for whatever reason, the way Armored Warfare does SPGs, sorry, is in two groups. A smaller, faster, more assault-based SPG, or assault gun, and then the bigger, heavier, traditional SPGs. And so that's split up here, starting at the M108, which is the tier 3 and first SPG in the game. You go to the M109, which is the big traditional American one, the Palmaria, and then down to the Paladin. Or you can go to the Gobsh... I'm not going to say it, but... <laughs> the Russian one at tier 4. Then the Akastasia at tier 6. And then the PLZ-89. So there's more artillery to grind through on that line. But they are faster and easier to get through than the two at the top here just because you're able to shotgun them a little bit better because they are more mobile and what that means is you can sort of do a direct fire or TD mode a lot easier now of course all SPGs can do it but as you'll see in some of my gameplay because I'll try to show you that which it really is a necessity in this game Art artillery is not really fine-tuned in armored warfare yet you do have to direct fire in all SPGs at some point, but these heavier, more traditional TDs don't do it very well, whereas the PLZ-89 is almost like a tank destroyer in the way that it plays than an artillery piece. And so I don't really have any from this line. I might pick up the Akashtiza, sorry, Akashtiza, God, those are hard to say and do some reviews on it if you want to as part of more artillery stuff uh, but for now I've just been going up this line because the tier 9 is the Paladin which is a very heavy and again traditional self-propelled gun so I don't really see why unless it's you know it's how you want to play it it's how you want to have fun with the line but I don't see why I would waste time grinding through artillery pieces that will ultimately play nothing like the tier 8 sorry I said tier 9 but will not I'm playing like the tier 8 and subsequently the tier 9 and tier 10 SPGs. So that's why I went that way, but it's up to you. And so, because of that, I'm just going to show off some of this gameplay. High tier, I have some low tier artillery pieces. Yeah, I got the tier 4 one. So I can show you what an assault SPG is like. And depending on how that goes, I will do some PvP gameplay in the ST1. Again, in the Rozo mock. The Rosa Mach Mark 1, the Type 96, just maybe a game for each. I want to show you guys how well this vehicle performs, the BBPM2, which is one of my favorites. You've already seen how the OT64 performs, but I haven't done a video yet on the OA82, so I'll probably put that in this video. And just another pretty much showcase on all the little vehicles and all the cool vehicles in the Zongfang tech tree. And then just talk about where Armored Warfare is going, talk about the high tier French tanks that are coming in, and just my own personal thoughts and opinions of where this game sits compared to other vehicle games, and kind of the variety of vehicles that it has. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you want to see artillery gameplay, you want to see more of the Zongfang tech tree, or just hear a discussion about Armored Warfare vehicles in general, stay tuned and thank you for watching. Alright, spawning into Starry Night with the Palmaria took a little bit hard, longer to find a game because it's hard to find any PvE maps that favor artillery gameplay. Um, and you'll see what I mean in a second if you've never played artillery in this game or any other game. 
what I mean by that, and it's just kind of awkward because I explained in the last video why PvP artillery is so controversial and why Armored Warfare has avoided it for so long, but at the same time, they don't really give artillery any kind of help in PvE. So the way that they balance it is as artillery should be. Um, the damage, the credits it may experience coming in off of that damage. Looks like the lions have prepared fuel for their contingency plan. All that's balanced exactly like artillery should be. So they can't use it to burn the fields. And you'll understand again if you've never put artillery why that is in a minute. And all that is fine. But those balances are meant for PvP. Doing really great damage in one hit that, you know, you only have a 20% chance of making. The long reloads, relying heavily on support damage. It's all for PvP. At PvE, when you're playing against bots like this, and your teammates are just going to be taking most of the kills from you anyway, because you can't really engage as quickly as you want. It's almost like, why... Black Company, it seems that the lines of Nick Wheel are a constant pawn in our sights. Um, it appears they are after this bounty due to the food source. Yeah. Knowing them, they That's will probably burn the farms to the ground if they can't get their way. Stay sharp. How do they pick vehicles and why do they pick them? So, again, if you've never played artillery before, this is the sniper mode, if you will, or the zoom mode for artillery. Um, as you can see, because we're in a city right now, that doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm going to have to move into the city where my people will be vulnerable and try to engage targets that way in direct fire mode. So this is the mode I was talking about earlier, where it does not favor vehicles like this one. Loader, AK. And we have a tenth of a meter of time, it's not bad. For an artillery piece, this is usually 15 minutes. So that is because I'm using my free up like free commander. He's got the special But yeah, you see how I just missed that shot that close. It's not really accurate. The reason it's not so accurate is because they don't want to be up the power. That was close. I will say the only help that they do give artillery is that just like AFVs are targeted by the AI for any of the vehicles, and if you didn't know that, the way the AI works, and this isn't like malicious, but AFVs, once you brush into a game, will get shot at first before MVPs are going to go and they do that to dissuade AFV players from going crazy. And then, followed by that, are tank destroyers and our main battle tanks, which I think they might fire at main battle tanks a little bit more than tank destroyers and main battle tanks just on the field. And then, lastly, and this might not be true, the AFV and the main battle tank ones are true, but from what I've noticed, just like you just saw there, the AI didn't even look at me while I was that close, and so they do give you that kind of assistance. Now, AI is not going to just not shoot at you, obviously. It will still shoot at you, it will still hit you, but less than destroyed. less than other vehicles and this is what our community is meant for so you see I just one shot that um, AMX 10P this is kind of how artillery is supposed to be used and why people don't want it in um, PvP because it becomes a little bit OP there however here now this is a really great matchup for me because we get open maps so I'm able to just keep hitting the spawn or not the spawn, but keep hitting this cap circle over and over again. And so it's alright, it's not bad. But it's a slower, more methodical, and more skill based gameplay. And now I know when I'm saying that, it's not like crazy hard skills to master, it's not like. I don't know why my turret's being so. It's like you have to work too hard to learn how to play it. It's, it's just it's a little bit more nuanced, it's a little bit different, and so while it seems like it's just point and click, there is a way to learn how to hit targets better. However, I don't know how true that is in terms of PvE, because once you get open games like this, as long as your team occupies them, like this team, this is a good team, you can just keep hitting 
targets because they're going to stay mostly stationary. Now you'll see, if you ever play the Sheridan, you'll see what that damage is. This is close, you're still getting good damage, like that. That's from high explosive rounds of high calibers exploding next to a target. Now artillery makes a lot of its damage off of this, and it's called splash damage. It's you miss a target, but you hit close enough that your round does maybe 30% damage. Now it doesn't do anything if you completely miss like I did. And so instead of making the Alpha, which for this vehicle is around 800 to 1,000, uh, we'll be making like that. Hurry, Black Company. And Go another thing you'll see, with, which is hard for me to justify having artillery and armor warfare, is that unlike in other games where top-down vehicle armor is very thin, modern vehicles, while that's still true, the thinnest armor is usually going to be right on the top. Unless you're like in a Merkaba or an Avens where they have reinforced ceiling compartments. Um, it's still very thick for only high explosive rounds to go through. Now, artillery in the real world has all manner of rounds between high explosive and armor piercing. And so I would believe that armored warfare has taken out armor piercing rounds from artillery use just because it would be too good. But because of that, you're not going to be able to penetrate vehicles such as reliable because then you're relying mostly on splash. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, if it's just for PvE anyway, why not balance artillery to have multiple shell types just to help combat the thicker armor of modern MBTs? And, you know, I don't know. I'm not a game designer. Also, you'll notice the bloom is a little weird. Instead of being just one ring that opens and closes and depending on how accurate it is, it, the bloom fits anywhere in these dots, and so the frequency of the dots shows you where the shell is most likely to go. So where the, the more dots are, that's probably where your shell is going to be. And so if you're really lucky, and that helps you map out to you'll be able to get all those dots to close up on one spot, and that's a direct hit. But as you've probably seen this whole game, but you hadn't been thinking about it, but if you rewatch it, you'll notice very rarely do all the dots close up on a single spot. They're usually going to be pretty spread out like this. And you're going to rely on either a direct hit like that one, or splash. And again, just like I said in the last video, if this seems like something interesting to you, if you're getting a little bit bored, you're like, this is actually really cool, I want to play artillery, and yeah, I must be blocked by a uh, mountain there. Then I encourage you to play it. It is entirely unique. No other vehicles in the game fire like this, have this kind of reticle. And. Nope, it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna try not to kill my. Hunter, AT! That was close! There we go. Or fall off this cliff. And yeah, it is a very unique style both in the traditional sense, like I'm playing here, or in the direct fire assault sense, which I'll show you in the smaller Russian artillery piece right after this. All right. But yeah, that it's just... Good. Artillery is often the to see the after the play in this game. But pretty cool, I'll just say, you know. It's, it's neat. I, I appreciate artillery. I like it. I don't really like playing it. It's not exactly how I like my play style, which is... Obviously, I'm an AFD player, I like to be more aggressive, faster reloads, less damage. But it's... The one good thing about it being only PvE is that it will give artillery players who are just starting out the ability to really learn. And it's not terrible, 3,000 experience, 51,000 credits, 9,000 damage, it's not bad. That puts a second place to the T90. So it's fine, but here's what I was trying to tell you about experience in artillery in other games versus armored warfare, and of course the main game I'm talking about is World of Tanks. And while these two games are not really comparable, and I try, even though I've done it a bunch of times, I've played World of Tanks for years, it's one of my favorite games, and Armored Warfare is one of my new favorite games, I've only been playing this for about a year and a half now. They're not really comparable, and I wouldn't really want anybody to compare them. Not only are the vehicles super different, but the unique play style is different. So I hesitate to lump them together in comparison, but artillery is one thing I think they might have in common, or be comparable, and that is you make more XP in World of Tanks per hits from artillery to counter 
the fact that you're going to be playing in the rear the entire time. Now the difference is, is that here, because it's PvE and you have to advance the mission, in World of Tanks, or if artillery was PvP here, you stay in one place, you stay solitary. And so because of that, you're not going to be spotting, you're not going to be doing anything. The only thing you're going to do is be getting splash damage, tracking vehicles for assist damage, or getting direct hit and kills. And so because of that, artillery in World of Tanks gets an experience boost. Now, it's not like a true experience boost, like you're just going to make 30% more experience than your base every time. It moves with it, but it's a small, it's just a little ratio to bump up experience. That way, artillery players in that game don't get completely shafted by the fact that artillery isn't going to be moving around a lot. Armored Warfare does not account for that. You get the same experience just like every other vehicle. There's nothing wrong with that. As you just saw, I made 3,000, but the base experience was 500. It's, one of the, it's on the really low side bottom of the team even though it was a great game in all other regards and so you know grinding these vehicles in armored warfare is going to be a lot harder to do if you're used to grinding them in world of tanks but i mean grinding in armored warfare is not really easy anyway you know you just or not hard anyway you just play the tank enough times it's just going to take you a little bit longer to grind through artillery than it will any other vehicle just because it only gets pve and it makes the same amount of experience as every other thing, but it doesn't have any of the assist, like spotting, assist, or any of those advantages. But again, that could be interpreted as a good thing, just like the PvE thing, because it will allow players who stick with these vehicles not only greater rewards in the future in terms of skill and experience gained overall, but it will allow newer players to really understand how artillery works. And so, you know that's about it for that gameplay like I said next we're gonna look at this vehicle which is pretty cool again all artillery pieces in armored warfare only fire high explosive regardless of other rounds and there's only one two four six eight ten there's only 10 artillery pieces of the game. And... I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's plenty. It just depends on where... Where you lie. Like, where what can't be said with artillery? Is it really important? Is it really unique? Or is it not so important and you don't really care for it in the game? But, just like Armored Warfare in general, it's a very small game right now. It's growing. The tech trees are very small very basic and that's kind of what I want to talk about today is where does armored warfare sit in other vehicle games and how do vehicles make it into the game who decides what vehicles make it into the game and um, on what basis like, why have these 10 artillery pieces at all and even have that as a class and then the opposite side of that argument which is usually the side that I'm on is why only 10 I mean every nation in the world right now has a modern artillery piece and when they brought in check vehicles I really thought they were gonna bring in the Diana which is this really huge wheeled artillery piece which is unique um, there have been tests over the past year at this, as long as I've known about it but they're probably been going on way more for mortars modern vehicles rely heavily on mortar support instead of artillery and they had a Russian mortar system in the game in the test files and they were testing it why didn't that move forward you know there's so many things you could do with artillery that they don't do in this game and there's a couple of factors on why and one of them is it's not very popular and not a lot of people play it and that goes for not the not it's popular that's just artillery the class well it goes for everything in world of tank or not world of tank sorry that's why i don't like talking about both of them at once i get confused armored warfare is that there's a lot of vehicles that don't make it and the reason I want to finally have this conversation is because I've been mentioning it lightly over this tech tree, the newest one, which I think will have a total of 14 vehicles in it. And why? Why these vehicles? Where's the rest of the tech tree? And by where's the rest of the tech tree, what else would be in it? And so over the course of the gameplay that I'm doing and other parts of this video, I'm going to be talking about that. For example, biggest red flag with this um, line for me was no AMX-13s. 
Um, none of the French light tanks, you know, there was an ATGM version used by the Israelis. There was a Sherman version used by the, um, that is a Sherman tank with an AMX-13 turret, uh, used by the Egyptians. And these are all low tier vehicles. And that's a big part of this conversation is that armored warfare makes trees blocks at a time which makes sense is how it works you get vehicles that start at low tier and then high tier and then you scatter in new vehicles through updates and so they really focus on their high tier vehicles which is fine because that's where people want to go to that's where they want to drive to getting higher tier vehicles and so this whole end of the tech tree is very good i think it's really interesting really dynamic very cool and all these vehicles at the low end are too but my biggest issue with Armored Warfare's vehicle pools are that there's so many cool vehicles they could be using at low tiers, and the problem that I have with it is that I know that those vehicles probably won't make it into the game because low tiers aren't really popular. It's not really where you want to sit new vehicles between tier 3 and tier 5. But there's great examples, and, you know, no AMX 13s at all. One, no EVRs, which are four wheeled. Uh, scouts. There wasn't the French artillery piece, although I didn't expect that to be in the game. I really didn't want it. <laughs> but there's another thing you could have added to the tech tree. And so this is just a small example of where that could go. Just using this tech tree, just a few things. And the reason I want to talk about it now is just because over the course of the next few updates, Armored Warfare in their news bulletins keeps releasing you know, oh, here's what we're doing next, here's where we're going. There's like a lot of arguments, like here's vehicles players want to see in the game, or here's lines they want to see in. Why, instead of these vehicles, do we have, you know, like 4072s or something like that? Nothing wrong with that, it's just... It's how they started. you got to start with your core vehicles and then branch out. And Armored Warfare is still pretty young. It came out four years ago now. And so, well we should be seeing more and more tech trees I mean I think they're delivering we got the Israeli one right after that we got the French one inside of a six month period it's two tech trees two new nations so it's growing it's growing uh, I'm gonna wait and see if I can get a better matchup and then we're gonna get into this gameplay and I'll continue talking about this because it's one of those things that's near and dear to my heart. I love collecting vehicles. I think there's a lot of great examples that aren't in the game, but I also think that Armored Warfare does a really great job with the vehicles it does have. So it's it's a hodgepodge, I guess, kind of a topic. We'll see how it goes. All right, spawning into Umbrella, which I think is a great mission to show off this particular children piece. Sorry about the weight. Well, for you, it's not a weight. I shouldn't even have addressed it. I just like cutting out the part because I wait a long time to get good artillery games. Just to show off. I mean, I could really suck this game regardless of how good the artillery piece is. I just happen to think that this map favors artillery pieces because right, Black Company. it We've the NDAA Air Force out, but the area is still heavily but yeah, it's you need to take it's over their base and wait for reinforcements. And again, good luck. They don't take prisoners. Incoming! Damn it! Don't lose the base! Load AG! Yeah, see, they, um... You see how I just was able to go straight direct fire and hit it that quick? I would not have been able to do it in the Palmer yet. Now again, another big part of this is that... Threat destroyed! Black the Palmer is just bigger than this thing. Quickly. Obviously, it's a huge tier 7, so it's not tier 4. I will check and provide flares to mark their locations. Move to intercept and use whatever force necessary. God, he talks a lot. Um, <laughs> wow, I don't know what our T-72 is doing. He's, <laughs> he's the MBT, but whatever. Anywho, the Palmeria take my word for it, is not anywhere near as mobile, not just because of sheer size, but because of the type of artillery. This vehicle is really great at being like a mini tank destroyer. And the good thing about artillery is that I can just sit as far back as I want in this position, as long as I have a clear view of the airfield. Uh, it doesn't really matter where I go. And then of course you can move. Let me see if I can move. Let me see if I can move. Okay, and no too close. My shell will just go straight into the ground. There we go. So 
I can't shoot any vehicles closer than this point. Okay, I'm gonna move up. That's kind of ridiculous. Anywho, back to what I was saying about just vehicle selection, the things that they keep saying they're gonna add. Uh, yes, they do have a lot of vehicles. Yes, I do like the way that they do things. It's just, I always feel like there could be more. The big thing with, like, um, having multiple iterations with vehicles evolution and different vehicles. That's good. Hopefully nothing bad happens to me. That is part player complacency in terms of, you know, just how they really visualize armored vehicles. Like, for me, I started playing this game to get three vehicles, you know. The M1 Abrams, which I already have, the T14 Armada, which I have, and then the PL01, which is the tank, which I'm still grinding towards and don't have. Well done, Black um, Dumping. And that was it. Just three vehicles. And so this game had everything I needed. And the more I played it, the more I was like, oh, I wish I had more vehicle variety. And, you know, part of it, you know, a big part of it is these are conversations that I have in the forums where I would have, like, just in the game's global chat. And I think that always came up as, like, oh, you can't put in these vehicles. Or, like, oh, there's only so many vehicles in Modern Warfare right now. And it's like, that's a case by case basis, the first one. But to address the second one, that's absolutely not true. I mean, there's thousands of different types of armored vehicles that are still in active use, or, like I said, low tier wise, were used in the interwar period or used in Middle Eastern conflicts in the 60s. Um, that would absolutely be great vehicles to play. And one of the biggest ones that I always see that always comes up is when will the Japanese Type 10 MBT into the game? And they're like, oh, never. It's too light to be an MBT. It's not good. And it's like, all these arguments are BS. You can balance the Type 10 easily at both Tier 9 and Tier 10, and it would play exactly like the K-21 Korean light tank, or a hybrid of that, and, um, oh god, there's like a really, the PLO-1, it's a lightly armored main battle tank for anybody that doesn't know what the Type 10 is, it's a Japanese 4th generation or 5th generation main battle tank, and so they did add the Type 90 Japanese tank as an exclusive, and that's another thing I want to talk about. Most rare vehicles now are entering the game as exclusives or event vehicles, so you don't really get to use that variety. But we do have a Ukrainian main battle tank in the game, but it's almost impossible to get. And same thing, we do have a Japanese vehicle now. And so, you know, the question then is, well, so then what's the problem? They have them, they can balance them. Why? Well, one problem is, they're not really introducing enough. Having one special event exclusive, isn't exactly a Japanese tech tree, especially when it's one that so few players have access to for reasons. What is with? I think my mouse just died. Yeah, it did. Well, there it is. Um, especially with. Oh, oh, Your Sorry, I got That's the first step in driving out the MPAA three These three. event exclusive vehicles are not like a marathon. They're not mission unlockable. You can't play to get them. You have to just buy loot crates, and if anybody's playing Armored Warfare with this loot crate thing, you know that you have a 0.00%, like 1% chance of getting the vehicle you want from them. So you're going to have to spend an excess of you know, like up $100 to get as enough crates to build one vehicle. Again, not bad. 15,000, 3,500 damage, tier 4, not bad. Uh, last place in terms of damage and experience. Oh wait, no we're not. That's kind of do anything. But yeah. So artillery's fine. Not my thing. I don't think it makes enough credits or experience to really be a viable class on its own without the PvP tie-in. But that's neither here nor there. You know, make it what you want to. Play it how you want, and you'll have a good time. Trust me. I think that's going to be it for my artillery gameplay today, because hey, I don't really like it. I talk about these vehicles. And by these vehicles, I mean check AFVs in general, not just this one uh, particular vehicle, which I do love, the OA-82. Um, I want 
to get some PvP gameplay in, if I can. If I can, if I can, if I can. I'm going to try to do a random battle on this. Oh, 30 seconds. I should be able to get in just fine. But that loot crate issue is one very small part of the vehicle problem because it's rather modern development, them introducing new vehicles that they think players might not really be interested in to progress, but will be interested enough if it has the addition the additional pull of being, oh, exclusive, like, oh, the only Ukrainian MBT, I'll buy it, or the only Japanese MBT, I'll take it, uh, which is cool, but it squanders a lot of potential. Um, for example, they keep saying they're going to add Scandinavian vehicles, and the French tech tree made me excited for this, and also, you know, skeptical, because I was like, oh, France has so many, like I said, the AMX-13s, the EBRs, they have a whole slew of tank destroyer and infantry support vehicles. Um, more VBL variants, even though nobody wanted that. I, I just happen to like the VBL. What vehicles would be a tier 10 besides the Leclerc main battle tank? Where would they take it? Would they finally get, you know, the newest? I mean, the Sphinx AFE is one of the newest ones in the world, but they did just develop another one. I think they're calling it the Jaguar. And that would be, it would be almost the same as the Sphinx, but now it would be tied to the French tech tree, which is appropriate because it's French, you know, just little things. They have an experimental tier 9 tank destroyer that they're putting in as a premium, however, I I hesitate, I'm afraid that that vehicle is going to become an exclusive, and we won't actually be able to unlock it, even with just gold. Anyway, because of what I consider to be uh, a mostly empty French tech tree, and you know that's that's my bias. That's my take on it. You might not agree with it. I hesitate to, you know, explore what Scandinavian vehicles they could employ because, on the one hand, you know, people are like, oh, where would they put them? Hopefully, in their own tree. And then it's like, oh, but is there enough? And all these normal questions: how you balance them? Is there enough? Well, one, there is more than enough, and two, they should have their own nation tree. I mean, Sweden alone has a plethora of examples. The question is, you know, which one are they going to pick? Are they going to just do multiple evolutions of, like, the Stritzvang 103, which is this really cool, like, turretless MBT? Sorry about that. Or, loading into pipelines. Nice. Good matchup. Good map. Very exciting. But back, are they going to even have the Sturzfang 103? Are they going to put in the Sturzfang 81, which is basically a Centurion, or, as you know in this game, the Schock del... I can't say it, but it's the Tier 4 Israeli MBT. That's a British Centurion. Well, one of those vehicle, or a Centurion like that, but with guided missiles on the turret, was developed by this amazing Tier 4 vehicle to see. But then it's like, well, we have any AFEs. That's another thing that's, I think, missing from the French line. And there's a lot of Scandinavian AFEs, like um, the IKV-90, uh, which is a kind of PT-76 type. It's There's a lot of vehicles that they could employ from Sweden alone. And we already have a Norwegian tank destroyer in the game. We can have multiple vehicles. Well, Scandinavia includes some of the smaller nations, like Austria, has some pretty great armored vehicle examples. So it's just, it's how do they pick these vehicles, and mostly it's what are popular examples in the real world, and what are sturdy, easy examples to balance, so they want to slide towards more MBTs, like, the Stetsvang 103 series would be very hard to balance, because they have no turrets, so they'd be like tank destroyers, but they also use hydraulics, and pneumatic suspensions, which are in the game, on a few vehicles, like the Object 279, or T90, as their elevation to pressure, so the guns don't move at all. And so it'd be a very cool tank, but why would they pick it, or why wouldn't they pick it, rather? And I think a big deterrent would be, will players really enjoy playing that? Would they really want to learn how to play it, or would it just be a vehicle that only 
more advanced players who are looking for something new would use. And so that might dissuade them from putting in this Threats Vong 103. And it's little decisions like that that really determine what will obviously they determine how the vehicles under, but it explains why there's so many vehicles that play similarly. So many MBTs that are bound to no bad. Mm, I should have used my missiles. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. I really feel like there could be so much more vehicle variety in this game. No bad. Ricochet. And they don't know how to employ it yet, or they're worried that maybe, um, players won't really be interested. No oh, man. What an unlucky shot. And so it's because of that, I'm hesitant to say, like at first when I heard they're introducing Scandinavian vehicles, the first thing that came to mind was Star Wars World 3, and then, oh man, all these other vehicles, or like the Austrian light tanks, or even the TAM, which is Argentinian, but it was developed between Argentina and Germany, you know, which is a medium tank with a Boston, Leopard 1 turret on it. And it's just, there's a lot of vehicles, and to cycle back to Japan, where it's like, oh, people want the Type 10, and then, you know, they have the Type 90, and it's like, oh, you know, what other vehicles would there even be? Well, you have the Type 18, which is a heavy tank destroyer. That plays exact. That would play. It operates in the real world exactly like the Centauro series of Italian wheel tank destroyers. You have, um, I forget what it's called. The type. Oh, what is it? A whole litany of AFVs that use recoilless rifles. Use ATGMs. They play like the Bradley, um, or like the M113 recoilless rifle vehicle. And it, there's a lot of vehicles. Identify target. It's kind of my point with this rant is that there's so many vehicle examples that would play at all good tiers. The only ones that I struggle to find, which is probably why these vehicles or these nations don't enter the game, are top tier examples, tier 10 examples, that kind of thing. Which are hard for me to come up with. All my vehicles are mostly going to be between tier 3 and tier 8, the ones that I'm listing now. There's even a bunch of multiple rocket launch systems or MRLS I always mess it up and say MLRS or something or maybe it is MLRS multiple launcher rocket system it's one of the Identify. two but there's a huge amount of those types of vehicles and a lot of people are like how are you going to put rockets in a game but they did with the Strela or the um, MS8 SM8 it's this premium tier 6 Ukrainian vehicle that has two rocket pods on it. And they use it as the test bed for unguided um, rockets. How would that work in this game? And it's basically you just shotgun rockets into somebody and whatever. I think it's a great vehicle. It's not that popular amongst players, not only because it's premium, because it's a little bit hard to you know, use, because it doesn't have a long range capability. But. It's, a, target. it's fun to oh, play, and it is balanced. Target we took a hit. No bad. It is balanced in the game. Ricochet, no effect. Oh, what? Did that leopard just... Thanks for nothing, leopard. Like, oh, there he goes. Wow, he just... He hit me for 478. He shot me for 478, then rammed me for 78. Good teammates, everybody. Anywho. Oh, I destroyed his gun, so it's like he's gonna shoot me anytime soon. He's just trying to ram me at this point. And I'm dead. I cannot believe that leopard just shot me for no reason. Like, what was the point? Oh my, well this vehicle's a lot better than this. What a shitty, what a shitty team. Like, I, I hesitate always to blame teammates for bad games, but when they play against you instead of with you, it's, what are you going to do about it? 
Man, what a fucking shitty game. Anywho, there's a bunch of systems that have been tested, like the mortar system, or have been tested with actual vehicles in the game, like the rockets, that they're just not putting in the game. And there's a bunch of reasons for that, a bunch of, you know, design and engineering reasons behind that. But I really feel like that would open up a whole lot. I mean, not only was there a Japanese vehicle that did that, but there's obviously the American one, the huge, two huge American ones, the BTR, um, not the BTR, although those are vehicles I want to see in the game. Those are Russian AFVs from the 60s, and they've been modernized all the way up to today to effectively combat um, modern tanks. So why no BTR series? Those awesome wheeled AFVs? No idea. Those would be great to see as well. But I'm trying to remember. It's a Russian truck. It's a gauze truck, but it has... Everybody's seen it. And it has a bunch of rocket pods on the back. That would be cool. And that's another thing I've asked... I've jokingly brought to forums and um, talked about, but um, just gun trucks in general or trucks, any type of modern, you know truck weapon system and obviously that ranges from technicals which use the same rocket pods as let me let me pull up this vehicle for you guys you can see what I'm talking about if you don't know um, it's this it's the MTLBS8 so I got it way wrong which is why I'm glad I'm showing you this um, these are unguided rocket pods you get 40 you get 80 rockets 40 each or maybe I have that backwards nope 80 yeah 80 in total, two reloads, 20 rockets each pod. Should have remembered that. And so, I might do some gameplay of this vehicle actually later on if anybody's interested. I know it's not Zong Feng, but it is pretty cool. And so, this is the unguided rocket system that's been successfully tested, implemented, and used in the game. And these exact rocket pods right on top here are the rocket pods I'm talking about. And those are used on technicals all the time. Now technicals have no nation, they don't even have any real affiliation. You can see them everywhere and for those of you who don't know, a technical is any pickup truck or dump truck or trailer, semi, whatever, any truck that has weapons put on it. And so you'll see these all over the news usually you'll see Toyotas with these rocket pods on them. And while that's a joke, <laughs> I think if Armored Warfare implemented something like that, it would be pretty funny, pretty cool. But that's my point. There's so many ways you can implement new vehicles, and there's so many vehicles that they already have systems in the game they just don't employ. I'm like, there's never been a Humvee, which, you know, the American Hummer that has weapons on it, the HMMV or whatever, I don't know the actual acronym, I just always called it a Humvee, which is the American Gauze, which we have one Gauze vehicle in the game, which is the Russian military jeep, and that would be the Cornet. And so we have a tow missile launcher on the VBL, we have it on the Visal, why don't we get a Humvee with it, which was one of the vehicles that was used extensively and very successfully throughout the Iraq war as a tank destroyer. Why no Humvees? Um, <laughs> that, this is, now I'm rambling, so I'll stop, but these are the kind of things I'm thinking about, like, Armored Warfare can expand a lot, so to anybody that says, you know, oh, there's not enough modern vehicles, because they're used to seeing, like, oh, the Abrams had, you know, three major evolutions, that's why there's the four that are in this game, or that's just how tank design works. It is, and it isn't. That is how tank design works for MBTs and other you know, big vehicles like, you know, tanks. Tanks are very hard to design. They usually, especially nowadays, make them modular or make exports. So you have two AMX 30s, the normal AMX 30 and then the AMX 30 brand new, which was an export upgrade. Uh, so that is how modern tank designs work. So if anybody says that, you know, that is accurate. But there's so many avenues to move away from tanks, at least in my opinion. But that is enough theory crafting. That is <laughs> just enough of that rambling for now. I'm going to see if we can get into some more gameplay, possibly in the Strella. 
which is what I call this because for some reason I have that stuck in my head. If anybody else remembers when this was launched, please let me know if they called it the Strella in an article or something, or I could look back, I guess, and read the article. But the Strella doesn't show up anywhere. It's just the MTLB S8, or just S8 for short. I don't know where I got Strella from, but I still refer to it that way, so if you hear me referring to it ever in the future, or saying, oh, the Strella can do that, or this, it's it's actually this vehicle. So I'll see if we can get the game in this, or any one of these AFPs. They're all very good, but I might try to do another game in the BVP M2. I'm going to try to f see if my mouse needs maybe new batteries, fix that up a little bit, and then more gameplay of these vehicles, but thanks for the rant. It's just something that's always on my mind. I'm just looking at all my tier 6 AFPs right now. The Fox is pretty good, by the way. I might actually buy the Ingua, which is another... These are guided missiles, and it's another example of vehicles that see limited action in the real world, but we're did see action one and two are part of an increasing modular military and i keep saying the word modular which when i say that applying to tanks it essentially means base vehicles bbl here humvee in america the gaz or gaz in russia just jeeps that you can put a bunch of weapons on the m113 still serves today the warrior afv from england still serves today, although they really modernized that, so it doesn't really look at all like the APC anymore. Um, the PTRs, like I mentioned, the BMPs, the BMDs, they all serve today, even though they were invented and first built in the 60s. And they always will, because the weapons they carry, and that's how modern warfare is, you don't need to design a whole vehicle around a weapon anymore, you can design weapons around a vehicle. And that's why there's so many copies, and why I love, like, everything I've been saying is just a list of wants, like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this, there's so much more. And it makes it sound like I'm not grateful to Armored Warfare and that I think Armored Warfare is doing a really shitty job. They're not. And the VBL line is a good example of how you can take the same vehicle, put it into the same tech tree twice, and have it be completely unique each time. Let's see if I can pull it up. Or, you know, have the same missile launcher at the same tier and have it play two different ways much like it would in the real world because these are both reconnaissance AFVs with missiles but in Armored Warfare they made the Visal a tank destroyer because players aren't going to be able to use it as quickly or adapt to it as easily as the BBL and it used to be an AFV because it used to get the 20mm cannon just like the BBL but they've changed it and rebalanced it a little bit and the, that was a good decision it you know for all the things I've said what Armored Warfare could do better or what they could do with their vehicles, they've, they're have they doing a great job now because you have the Vizel again using the tandem heat missiles at tier 7 and it plays brand new, it doesn't feel anything like this. Same thing with the Ingwa, the VBR series is here, the Crab and the VBR were developed off of the Ingwa right after the other, I don't think the VBR or Persani Combat, the Crab did, the Sphinx is again the newest one and they all play differently, they're all unique, they're all from the same line of vehicles, they're all part of that modular design. Same thing with the BMD series, which they do really well in this game. Which all play differently, but they're all the same base vehicle. So, I mean, yes, there's a lot of wants I have, but what Armored Warfare is doing with the vehicle examples it does have is good enough. It's good enough. It's, And when I say good enough, for me, depending on the line, like when it comes to MBTs, good enough. But for AFVs, it's great. It's great. Compared to games like War Thunder, World of Tanks, which have so many vehicles. I mean, I think the Russian and German tech trees and both have in excess of 50 vehicles. Crazy, um, crazy, absolutely crazy. And our, um, war, blah, 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 blah. war Thunder is adding new vehicles every single day it seems like always moving into you know expanding and the only reason i bring those games up is because this one not, armored warfare doesn't only not have that many vehicle examples in it yet and again those games have been around for a long time but war thunder is moving into modern vehicles very rapidly they have half the vehicles you can see in this game at tier six or lower are already in war thunder with double that amount 
in nations like Italy and Japan that you don't really see a lot of vehicles up here. And so that's why I want more. I think Armored Warfare is doing a phenomenal job. I think what they have here is still a very unique touch with the AFVs and the way that they present them that no other game really has, even though War Thunder's trying their best to kind of copy in and get into that market. But they are moving so much more rapid or rapidly into accepting newer vehicles, into the future of Armored Warfare, into not the game, but like actual armored vehicles, that I'm worried Armored Warfare gets surpassed at some point because of the limited vehicle options that it has. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop playing this game anytime soon. That doesn't mean I'm going to start playing War Thunder <laughs> anytime soon. It just means that they're doing a really amazing job and I would love to see them do more vehicles. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. I really think Armored Warfare has got something special here and they could do more. And if you agree with me, give me a list in the comment section below. I'd love to hear some conversation on this. If you think, no, you're wrong. There's no way it needs more vehicles. This is great. You know, let me know. I'm happy to talk to you. If you think that I'm right, give me a list of your top 10 or top five vehicles you want. I'll even put one. I'll put up my top five in the comments below. Like, here's the top five vehicles I want to see in Armored Warfare now. And let me know, because I really think that there's a lot of room to talk about this. But not in this video, not anymore, because that was a huge ramble, and I apologize to anybody who sat through that and just wanted gameplay. So I'm going to play the S8, I'm going to play the BVP, and take it away from Zongfang for a little bit, and just play AFEs at Tier 6, and round out maybe just, maybe just with those two, just another BVP, and then just the MTS, or the MTL, and go from there. But thank you so much for listening to this rant, if you did. Like, if you didn't fast forward it, I appreciate it, and please let me know what your top five most wanted are. And that's about it for that rant. Let's just get back into gameplay. So again, sorry about that ramble. It's just a lot to think about there's so many armored vehicles, so many I didn't mention. I mean, talking about iterations of tanks, the Type 64 has had many, the Type 55 is still in service, and they all have different names. The He-72 is still in service uh, with different nations, and they become the nation's main battle tanks, and so they're named accordingly. They are given their own designation, their own special armor packages, that kind of thing. The only thing that stays the same is that, again, the T-72 underneath all the modifications is still a T-72 chassis. And so you could have Croatian, Polish MBTs, the Ukrainian one we already have, the Oblod, which is a T-84, um, modified. Most Eastern European vehicles and Balkan vehicles are. Serbian main battle tanks, the Finnish main battle tanks, they're all export versions of Russian vehicles. Um, there's an Indian main battle tank that's heavily based on Russian design, but it's a design all of its own. We even have the Black Panther, the K1A1, which is a South Korean MBT in-game, but again it's an exclusive. And so you could get all these vehicles in the game, it would be pretty great. But I'm pretty sure they'd all be exclusives at some point, which sucks. Anyway, for this vehicle, because it is a rocket launching system, you mostly want to shotgun people, so get really close to them and get close to their sides. The element of surprise is your friend in this tank. And so I'm just going to go down. Hit a wall. Because it's important. And then after that, we're going to go down this route and um, hopefully surprise some MBTs. Now this thing does have a minute reload time. That is not only to balance it, but also mimic the very real world fact that this has to be reloaded externally. Um, and that's a linking process or find new design. I 
try to face like this, Abrams. No, he spotted me. Identify target. Hostile PC. Yeah, they won't get close to me. Identify target. Fossil PC. Yeah. See, they fear this thing. So, I <laughs> lost the element of surprise. Eventually, they'll just rush me, but... obliterated that AMX-40. Uh, I guess he had never seen one of these before, or uh, just didn't expect it to do that. But uh, yeah, so bad positioning on my part, literally just put myself into this wall. I was hoping the Abrams would back up enough to let them move up, but oh well. That's how it works. That's how the unguided rockets work. So you will see, if you rewatch this, but I mean, you probably won't. That one or two of those shots at point blank range missed the vehicles entirely. Just like went right over it or off to the side. All crazy. So you can't really aim the rockets, and that's kind of the idea of unguided rockets. You just aim the general direction that it's pointing. That's why it's a shotgun vehicle. And I absolutely love it. And so that's why I want more vehicles like that in the game. Now, do I want like the PvP clusterfuck that'll come with that? No. <laughs> But that would only last on the day after the release. So if you put one in progression instead of premium so nobody had to buy it, you could just research it. Everybody would have one in PvP on the first day or first two days. And then, yeah, it'd be pretty insane because they would just be launching rockets all over the place. But after that, it'd be cool. It'd be cool additions. And they're not really great at PvP anyway because you have to be very close to use them. So they're not overpowered. You know, like, that was not an overpowered attack there. Only 2,000 damage. Not high for Tier 6. I, th I think it's fair. This is another... This premium vehicle was part of the um, stupid Battle Path event that they did. And I don't mean to call it stupid. It was just, like, um, you had to do missions and then missions on top of missions. And I have this and the Abrams Storm. And both of those vehicles were so much easier to get than the T-55 Enigma. And I don't know why, but this is another Ukrainian vehicle. Again, highlighting the modul <laughs> modular design of vehicles. This is a Ukrainian vehicle. You can see that right here, Ukrainian. This is a British vehicle. They are identical. The only difference is, is that this is using a swingfire missile launcher on the back of a Scorpion. AFV, which is just a turret, and this is using a completely redesigned Ukrainian turret with a remote-controlled 30mm cannon and missile to, um, oh god, what kind of missiles are these? The P2 ATGM. But still a, um, still a saber, or not a saber, still a scorpion. Sorry, the saber's a scorpion variant. Um, but very cool and if you go into I know I said I was gonna be done with this but I'm sorry if you go into the texture you'll see they have the scorpion the scorpion 90 which is new because it's completely unlocked for me but I don't think I've ever played that vehicle I have no memory of this vehicle ever existing so I think this is a new addition I've I really I don't know I don't know anything about this but the scorpion was a light reconnaissance tank developed by the British at the end of the 60s, early 70s. And so it exists here both in its original design form, 
with, I guess, what gun would they put on? What gun do they put on this scorpion then? Hold on, let me check. A 76 millimeter. Okay, so this has the original 76 millimeter gun, which was a popular weapon choice at the time. It's easy. It's what the French were using. Well, they were using 75s, but you know, in that range. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I just didn't know that. So that changed. It was the 90 when I played it at tier three. So I guess they added. I guess they really added the scorpion. <laughs> then. So you get the Scorpion, the Scorpion 90, and then what I was going to show you off of that is not only do you have the Saber, which is the AFE variant of that light tank, and now the Scorpion Cassette, but you also have somewhere in here the Skimit, the Scimitar, and if I can find it, yeah, it's at tier 1, which is, again, another... This, no, not another variant. This is what became the Saber. So for the same chassis, now I know they're designated as different vehicles because they, this, the FV-107 and the FV-101, which is the Scorpion 76mm, both served side by side in combat. So one was the AFV and one was the light tank. And that's usually how armored vehicle development goes. Is they'll develop one that's a heavier hitting vehicle that has one specific combat role and one that's an entirely different role. And so the light tank and the AFV both served England at the same time, but they're both the same chassis, different turrets, modular design. And so we now have five Scorpion slash Scimitar vehicles in the game. And with the exception of the Scorpion light tanks, I really have no idea. I gotta play those again. I have no, I have no idea what those play like. They all play differently, and they all are really interesting and unique vehicles. So, again, perfect examples of how unique the same vehicles can be based on just weapon systems alone. And also good on Armored Warfare for them because they are joys to play. Well, hmm, Scorpion Castet is a joy to play. The Sabres, not not so much. It's alright. It's The Swingfire Missiles are obviously pretty brutal. A, um, Scimitar. It's just a scimitar. It is, it, which is why the saber is so crazy at tier six, and it's another example of how armored warfare struggles. And this is not positive, and it's not negative. I'm not going to tell them how to do their job ever, but struggles to balance some of these weirder vehicles. And that's why they made this one premium because they couldn't really balance it right. And so this is a premium tank. I think it's an exclusive premium tank. I forgot how I won it. I think I got it out of a loot crate, but. I'm also not sure if you can just buy these now. No, it doesn't look like you can buy them. So yeah, it's, it wasn't exclusive, and the reason it is is because everything you see here, the way the gun works, the penetration the gun gets, the rounds, the hull, everything is balanced for tier 1 except for the missiles and so they moved it to tier 6 and gave it better view range than the tier 1 vehicle and it's like what and you see you see games struggle with that all the time is when small vehicles same thing with the cast head which is everything but the turret is balanced for tier 1 and that works in armored warfare because that's how it is in real life um, the only reason I don't like the saber is because the gun is still balanced for tier 1 like, if they just moved up the penetration values a little bit, it would have helped at tier 6 for the Saber to be better. But they didn't because that's not how it worked in real life. And so it's like, do you want swing fire missiles at tier 5, or do you just want players to learn how to play a tier 1 tank at tier 6? And so it's kind of ridiculous. It's why it's one of the reasons I don't like the vehicle a lot. But it's not, like, in battle. It's not a terrible mistake on Armored Warfare's part. It's just, you know, that's the nature of the beast when it comes to vehicles that are pretty similar or literally in that case the same vehicle with upgraded systems for more modern combat and so that's why you have the Centurion which is a 1950s British tank with the Israeli ERA blocks and everything at tier 4 in this game uh, you see there's a lot of vehicles that you can see that example on like the M48 Patton is a tier 2 in this game, and the M60 is the tier 3, and rightly so, but as a Magok, because it has the extra armor, 
they become tier four. Yeah, the Docks are tier four, and it's in the same spot as now the um, Centurion. It's kind of weird. That works. Wait, no, the Docks tier four. I'm sorry, I don't know, I should know. Anyway, my point is, you'll see a lot of times that really small or low tier vehicles get balanced for higher tiers when they get their more modern weapon systems in the game. And just like that logically makes sense, it both makes sense in the game, but also like makes the game feel weird or makes certain vehicles way harder to play than necessary because they're just outmatched and outclassed at the now higher tier, even though their guns are really good. Identify. Boss, Now I'm going to show you, well, well, not on that guy. I'm going to show you how to snipe with unguided rockets because it is so hard, it's almost impossible because it is their nature to be unguided. Alright, looks like my team's kind of just... We don't want to go further into the town. Or the plant. I always call this a town. It's a plant. Alright, got a hit. <laughs> yeah, they don't do a lot of damage. That's another thing. These rockets don't do a whole lot, and they're balanced like heat rounds. But, you know, rockets are kind of heat rounds. Sort of. I never really thought about it, but I guess that makes sense. Yeah, they would be balanced as heat rounds, yeah. Anyway, this is neither here nor there. They're balanced as heat rounds, so they can go through a lot of armor, but do less damage. Identify target. Awful, thanks. <laughs> I'd be so pissed about that challenger. I can't believe I just bounced that. Not good for me. So yeah, this vehicle's not completely hopeless. I'm gonna try and get out of here though, because this position's no longer profitable. It's not gonna go well for me. I do not know who's spotting me right now. I'm trying to find out where. I wanna get behind that challenger. Because, uh, again, because these are heat rounds, while they will go through thick armor for low damage values. They will go to thin armor for crazy high damage values. You know, you get like that flip side that's pretty strong. And so that's why I want to find the... Uh, it's not that... Identify target. Oh, awesome. oh, cool, an MBT-70. Now I'm just going to get behind this thing. I'm not coming. Target locked. Oof. Target locked. Penetrated. Target immobilized. That was stupid. That was... That's my fault. That was stupid. I should have known there would be a TD over there. But I did not even think about it. God. Damn it. Stupid mistakes like that piss me off. Like, I really, I really should have known where the TD There's literally nowhere else for TDs from the enemy team to be but in that position. And I'm talking about, of course, on the J line here, where I got shot from. <sighs> God. Stupid mistakes. Stupid mistakes. And again, it's because of this that I like playing global operations a lot more. If you saw that in the other video. Because. Well, the maps are the same. I don't have to worry about like the enemy team camping this whole corner, you know, over there, and we're doing that. It gives me a lot more time to move around. And obviously, if I made that mistake, which is stupid, I get to respawn. <laughs> I don't get to respawn in this game, so I don't get to make any money and do no damage. It's, it was a pointless game, to say the least. These are all kind of really pointless games today, but. Not because of my team, like, in the game where the guy killed me. 
But, uh, oh wow, nice. We're, t we're in the top four for experience. I didn't expect that. Pretty okay, pretty cool. But yeah, um, not really great with this. But I do love it. I wish I could get to global operations to show you guys what that's sort of like. I'll start queuing for that. But I doubt I'll get it. German tanks were very good on start war, but outnumbered by Russians. And okay, so somebody saw about World War II vehicles in the global chat. Always cool. Cool, cool, cool. Merkov is a good tank. Yeah, it sure is. Hello gamer, I'm an EU, EU gamer. Here is the game tank. How do you find this game tank? What? Where are they? Okay, hold on. I'm not reading all that. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on with that. Anyway, what I was going to say was, I'm going to wait the full five minutes to see if I can get into a Global Operations game, but if I can't, this is going to be the end of the video, just because, let's see, I did two artillery gameplay, and then three PvP, so it's already been a pretty long video, unless you guys don't think so, if you guys want to watch any longer, go ahead, but I know there's a lot of dead space in there with me just ranting about the um, vehicle issue, well, not issue, but just vehicles in general in Armored Warfare, so keep it short, I'm just going to cut it off after this video, or after this attempt at getting into cool operations. Um, so, the next three and a half minutes. Uh, of course, if I get into a global operations game, I'll add that into the video. But if not, thank you for watching this much, right? <laughs> I, think I know it's the really long videos, it can get really boring, and I can kind of ramble, so always appreciate the support. And I really do hope that you guys will, again, put your top five most wanted vehicles in Armored Warfare down in the comment section below or, you know, just tell me your thoughts on disparaging Armored Warfare. I think they have a lot of really good successes with the type of vehicles they've implemented and how they've implemented them. I just feel like there could be more or they could add more and there's more that they can do. And, you know, it's a fact. There's always more you can do, but that doesn't mean that the game is bad. And I just want to make that clear. I don't think the game is bad. So... <laughs> Don't, don't send me, don't put anything in the comments about how wrong I am or how, you know, just how good Armored Warfare is or how good you think it is because I did it this way and all that stuff. Obviously, Armored Warfare is a great game. Obviously, I like playing it. I wouldn't be making these videos if I didn't. But let me know if you think I'm wrong in how to implement new vehicles or the vehicles that I picked or right or just your top five. I really just want to see what people's top five wanted vehicles are. Might do a poll later on just because I'm always curious so would love that would love for you guys to watch more of my videos to see more of my videos and I would love to make more about this kind of stuff so if you watched it this far because I'm almost done with this five minute timer here on this video thank you so much as always very grateful to have your support very grateful to have you guys watch these videos and I'll see you next time depending on when I upload next. Uh, again, if anybody actually could do me a favor, I don't care, all of you, one of you, whoever, if you could go and see if the first part of this video, which is the Zongfang Tech Tree Showcase, is uploaded, that would be great. Because it says people liked it, it says that it's got some views, but I can't find it anywhere in my channel or like in the YouTube studio. And again, I'm new at this. So I don't know what the problem is, but on my end, it looks like it didn't upload. And so I might just re-upload it anyway, but if somebody could do that before I do that and comment on this video, like, yeah, here it is, or like a link to that or whatever, just let me know that it is there and you can see it. That would be greatly appreciated. And so, yeah, I'm going to call it now because we're four and a half minutes into the five minutes. So down I'll get into a global operations game in the next 30 seconds. So again, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, if you actually stayed and watched the whole thing, throw up a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. If you want to see my old videos, if you want to get notifications for when I post new ones. And as always, thank you and see you next time.